Chiara Nick here from Film Convert, sort of battling the afternoon sunshine. We're still very much under lockdown, trapped at home in New Zealand, but we've been speaking to some really interesting users of Film Convert and Cinematch. I recently spoke to Harry Locke, who is a very much in-demand colorist and filmmaker based in Los Angeles. Harry recently worked on a micro-budget indie feature film called I'm Fine, Thanks for Asking, which I really recommend checking out now if you can, because it shows what can be achieved with a, a, a small black magic pocket cinema camera. Some really good photography in that film. Harry began his career as an online editor, which is a role I'm not, I wasn't too sure about, so I thought I'd, I'd kick off by asking him. But you're an a online editor. Online editor, color, well, I don't really do so much online anymore. I was an okay. online editor, uh, slash color assist and a colorist. Now okay. I mostly just work either as a colorist or I'm working as a writer director. But I, I oh, wow. basically kind of earned my, my stripes being the online editor, which is also known as a conform artist in the industry. A, a casual viewer might not know what an online editor is, and I think it's, it's, it's the finishing of the film. Am I correct? Yes. To, yes. yes. You know, it, the, I always say that the online editor is one of the most pivotal positions uh, in the p finishing process, but it's also one of the most thankless jobs, you know, because you're really kind of invisible, you know, you're, you're there, basically the editors and the directors and the, you know, the creative team, they make the offline edit. So they're making the actual film or story or piece. And then as the online editor, you kind of come in and you are that translation between the offline edit and then what's going out to your colorist or your VFX team or your sound team where you're relinking to the higher res material or you're basically polishing up the edit. And, mm. you know, the online editor rarely gets any praise because it's, you know, at the colorist, it's like, wow, you had a really cool yeah. grade. But the online yeah. editor is like, you really copied that timeline perfectly. <laughs> you know, yeah. it's like nobody... <laughs> you feel Bit of a functionary, it feels exactly. like, maybe. Exactly. No <laughs> one, so, no one so, to say anything about that. <laughs> was, no, no, it's, 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 it's uh, yeah, quite, uh, quite fabulous, I'd imagine. But, but co color, color's really matured now, and you're, you're sort of like, when, when you say you're a colorist, everyone, well, most, many people would know what, like, know that to mean, you know, you're the, right. you're the artist. Right. <laughs> and, <you know. laughs> Right. Or, 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 you know, it, it, the funny thing is I, I always tell folks who are, are looking to become a colorist or want to work, you know, at, at, at the bigger levels and have the bigger clients, you know, coming in as an online editor or a colorist is, is a great, great entry position uh, because you get to work with the clients very closely. So they get to know you um, and you get to work with the colorist very closely and you get to learn. You, you get to see different techniques and you get to see what works, what doesn't work. Um, and, you know, your my my skills as a colorist grew exponentially quicker by being an online editor and watching different sessions, looking at different projects and learning um, that way than I ever would have by just simply sitting there uh, spinning the knobs and, and, and learning through trial and error, right? You know, um, so it's a great learning experience. And, and you're working in the industry. You're working on big projects. And so, do you have a favorite project? Like a, a, a you know, there's something that you're. You, you feel quite passionate about having worked on? Well, I, I'm a little bit biased. So, I'm, a, you know, rather than pitting my clients against each other, I'm going to say my favorite projects is probably to work on are, are, are the ones that I write and direct. Um, I've got a project right now where we shot a proof of concept. It's called The Redeemer. And the Redeemer. The Redeemer. It's a, it's a, it's a revisionist Western. And uh, oh. yeah, so it's kind of like it's, it's, it's not your traditional Western style. We kind of took that that notion of a Western film and are really kind of updating the characters and really kind of updating the themes and the topics to make it relevant to modern day, even though it's still set in that P 
period piece time. Sort of like what Tarantino was trying to do, that kind of thing. A little bit. He's a little bit more on the spaghetti western side where it, right, this, right. you know, we we the the proof of concept that we did is actually a smaller piece for a larger feature that we're actually working with uh financing partners in China to create. Wow. And uh wow. the fi- the film actually takes place during uh, the background of the story is the Chinese Exclusion Act, which was a whole period hmm. during the U.S. where all these laws were passed to actually forbid Chinese from moving to the states and from different labor laws and different working. I was writing the project. I was thinking, you know, you looked at what happened when COVID-19 happened last year. You know, there was a lot of unjust you know, sentiment against the Chinese when that happened. I don't believe in preaching to people. I don't believe no, like, no, you know, no. sitting and hammering you overhead saying this is, mm-hmm. but I just want to tell you a story and I want to present the facts and this is how the story is. Beautiful, how you doing? You all right? You a preacher? You your church? I ain't never seen a reverend in skates. Incoming call from Sugar Lips. Incoming so the, call from Sugar Lips. My car is going off because he's pesky. Incoming call Hold from on. Sugar Lips. Call declined. This messed up. I apologize. It kept beeping. I'm fine. Thanks for asking. That's the name? That's, that's, yes. That's the name. Yes. We're very interested in seeing this. It looks like a really interesting um, um, project. How did, yeah. how did you come to work on that? So uh, Kelly Chapman, who is the director of that film, writer, director, and lead actress in the movie. Wow. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, she just does it all. Um, uh, we went to USC together. And so I had actually worked on, I actually colored a couple of projects uh, for her while we were at USC together and just became good friends, you know, and always kind of just kept up to date with each other. And she would, tell me she's got a new project going on and I would kind of come on and do some color for it. And uh, I got a call from her, you know, last year and she said, uh, Hey, you know, I took my uh, stimulus check money and I made a feature film, you know? Amazing. And I was like, okay, uh, awesome. You know? And she's like, yeah, we've, uh, yeah, she had her uh, writing and producing partner, uh, Dion Cole, and uh, he came on board, and and a whole team of creatives kind of came on board and helped shepherd her uh, through this project. And yeah, I mean, the film's incredibly timely because it it's shot during the pandemic, and it actually uses that as the story. You know, it uses that as part of what drives um, the lead character, uh, Danny, uh, which Kelly plays, where basically she is homeless. Her husband has passed, and it's left her and her daughter in a very precarious position where they don't have the money to uh, get a new place. And we follow her in a day in the life of where she's basically trying to get the last funds together so that she can go get a place to live for her and her daughter. And we see all the obstacles that come across her way as she tries to do this. You know, they shot that they shot Kelly's feature with the black magic pocket camera. Not the Ursa, not a Red, not an Ari, but it was the Black Magic Pocket camera, basically mostly with exteriors. Um, the DP, uh, who is a, a, a brilliant cinematographer named uh, Becky um, Becky Chen, who is a really great up and coming uh, cinematographer, did a wonderful job capturing great images with this little Black Magic Pocket camera. And essentially, what I was able to do was I took that footage and, you know, kind of got an understanding of what we were going for in the story, how we kind of wanted to look um, kind of this, you know, Spike Lee do the right thing type feel kind of an homage to that, you know, 90s kind of era of film. And, you know, I really wanted to play with, OK, how can we really get a cool film look out of, you know, the out of this camera? And, you know, it's interesting because when I first did my normal curves of, you know, applying film convert and, and, you know, playing with some, some, some of the curves and giving it kind of like a teal orange look. I mean, it was cool, but it wasn't right there. Right. It didn't feel like special. And then I discovered Cinematch, which was like a new plugin uh, that you guys had came out with. And I downloaded that and was able to actually 
take the black magic raw space and what I would do before grading it is actually convert it to Ari Alexa log C, which gave it more of a curve to match the Ari Alexa. And then oh. when I did my process to it, I mean, it was acting like it was Ari footage. I couldn't believe it. You know, I was yeah, like, right. I was like, this is, I found the cheat code, right? Like this is yeah. like, you can go shoot on this, like, you know, $1,200 camera, you get the yeah. Cinematch, convert it to log C, and then you can just go nuts. I was, I couldn't believe how much, how, how differently the footage was responding, uh, transforming it, you know, as opposed to just applying the grades right away. And that, and that's why I was like, this, this thing is clutched. This completely shaped the look of the movie. Where can where can we watch this film and 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 when's it when, when's it coming out? So the film premieres on uh, BET um, August seventh, uh, and then it's also gonna it was very soon uh, in the state, and then it's also gonna be on uh, VOD platforms. Um, so and I, I believe that will be internationally as well. You know, That's I know cool. I know it's gonna be on uh, Apple TV or the Apple kind of oh, cool, VOD plug cool. and, yeah. uh, and probably Amazon as well. So, you know, I'll, I'll follow up with you with the exact details of when we Hell yeah. post the I'll thing we over, can post it. Yeah. Be all over that. Looks, looks, looks fantastic. Thank you.